out there and welcome to the Dr. Lisa Show here on AUHS Denver, the stream. Should be your favorite radio station. Thanks for joining me. I have a great show today. Um, and I, I've got some changes I want to talk to you about. To begin with, I'm changing my tagline for the rest of the year. For the last two years, you know the tagline has been inspiring a renaissance of spirit. So I hope I inspired you. This year, we're talking about life on the loose, which is about how I've lived and what that really means and how do I help you do that. And each of my guests is going to have an element of that. So I'm going to have a guest on for the first half of the show. And then the second half, let's just chat. You can contact me. You can text into the station. Um, maybe not today, but you can usually. But you can, ch you can chat with me on Facebook Live. If you're one of my clients, you know my other number. You can chat with me there. But let's have some conversations about life on the loose. So a couple reminders about the show. We are spiritually multilingual. So if you're hearing something and the verbiage doesn't work, go for the intent. Listen to the, the meaning behind the words and don't get hung up on the language. And look for something that challenges your thinking. Uh, where, you know, the last two years we've all gotten into a bit of a rut. I, uh, I actually went out. Oh my God, I had a date with my steady. Uh, we've been together a year and a half, but we finally had a date. And I got to dress up. And I realized I'd been living in, uh, a lot of women will relate to this, yoga pants, right? And <laughs> leggings for, for two years. And wow, I, had, I, I reacquainted myself with clothes in my closet that I hadn't seen in quite a while. So let yourself be inspired, let yourself have a sense that there is a life out there that maybe is uh, just a bit different and is a little bit on the loose. Okay, a um, couple things. My book, my book, my book. This is my newest novel. You've heard me talk about it, Dark Fire. You like vampires? You want to know about vampire romance uh, and maybe love? You want to know about how an octopus falls in love with a horse? You want to know about a closet that takes over and begins dressing the main character, Tamara, with clothes she didn't buy on Amazon in Kindle or paperback. And when you're there, you can also note that I've got two other books. My first novel, The Way of the Well, and my leadership book, oh, about being a pirate, which we will talk about when we talk about life on the loose. So you can find my books, you can find me. Hey, you can also work with me. You can find me at alisarobin.com. Facebook, Elisa Robin. Instagram, Elisa Robin. LinkedIn, Twitter, you see the pattern here? Just Google Elisa Robin and you will find me. Robin has a Y in it. Okay, enough chatter. Let's, uh, let's get on, I've got like an amazing guest. And please, if you can, go onto Facebook Live so you can chat with me. And I'm gonna just check and yeah. Okay, we are live on Facebook, this is amazing. Okay. I have a great guest today, and as always, I let you know why this person, why I needed to meet this person and have her on the show. Um, during 2021, my, I had to put my big new fan, my 12-year-old uh, my Newfie, at the very beginning of 2020. And through 2021, I kept trying to adopt uh, a rescue animal, maybe a two-year-old. And I ended up with at the very end of 2021, the very end, a Newfoundland puppy, not what I had in mind. Brought her home, great dog, really great dog, who bit my hands, bit my toes, really had an attitude, really was sassy, still is, has a personality, and I wanted to train different. I didn't want to use the old style of training. I didn't want to use a choke chain. I didn't want, I wanted to have a partnership. and. This woman, Pat Blocker, was recommended to me for her SIT program, which she's going to talk about. And because not only is she a trainer, she is she comes at it from a different point of view. And I'm going to let her talk about that. Pat, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? I am Thank you for having me. Oh, this is going to be so fun. So here's where I'd like to start. You actually went from sort of the traditional dog trainer, right? And maybe mm -hmm. a bit of a skeptic. 
about connecting psychically with a dog or animal communication, and then you went to the dark side, right? You went all the way over there to let's train differently. Let's relate to our dog. Dogs are our teachers, our metaphors. They can talk to us. Just tell me about the journey. How did you go from skeptic to, to, to more than believer, but um, sort of a powerful communicator and teacher? Well, um, I am a certified professional dog trainer. I have been doing this for over 20 years. Uh, my business is Peaceful Paws Dog Training. So the, the uh, name of my business maybe clues you in a little bit, but um, yeah, and so I'm also an author and an animal communicator. So um, I started out, um, I'm actually a crossover trainer. I did used to do the compulsory um, choke chains and so on. And uh, I now am doing a more positive and minimally aversive methods. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's science-based, but I also have begun to blend it with um, more mindfulness and intuitiveness, and uh, that is what my SIT program is about, which we, we will be talking about. Um, SIT is S-I-T-T. -T. It's for uh, science, intuition, trust, and uh, training. So. Um, when I wrote my uh, second book called Letting In the Dog, my intent was to just touch on animal communication. Uh, I was really talking about um, opening our hearts and our minds to a deeper understanding with our dogs. And uh, so I got into researching animal communication and I really was fascinated with it. So I thought, hmm, let me see a little bit more about what this is, is all about. And uh, I started taking some classes from uh, some professional animal communicators and discovered I had a talent for it. Wow. And uh, uh, so I had heard before, I, you know, my opinion of animal communication was that uh, I was open to it, but certainly had a, a healthy dose of skepticism. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but I had heard people say that they had uh, used the services of animal mm -hmm. communicators, and they were like, wow, I can't believe, I, you know, there's no way she could have known that about my dog or whatever animal. And um, so I ended up coming at it from the opposite direction, where I started practicing and studying animal communication. And as I was working with my online study groups and uh, doing readings, uh, I was saying, wow, I could not possibly have known that. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so uh, that's kind of how I came at it. Um, and it's still quite validating still when I, whenever I get something spot on in a reading. Um, and now I'm offering it in conjunction with training. And uh, I was working with a client and did a reading with her dog. And then the next time we um, signed on for it, we were doing a virtual, um, I work strictly virtual, mm -hmm. and uh, signed on and she, um, she turned the camera on her dog and there was her dog nesting on the couch in a, with a blue blanket. And that is something that the dog had shown me in the reading as one of her favorite things is the exact color and so on. And so that was really helpful for the client too, to know that I was making such a connection with her dog. That is, that is amazing. And you know, um, you, pr you don't know this about me, but I came came out basically on this radio station as yeah I've got a PhD yeah I'm an ac I was an academic dean oh yeah I'm also a psychic I channel I I actually have one of my crystal balls with me today somewhere oh here it is um, you know put myself through school as a professional astrologer so I it's that's I think why we connect you've got that blending of sort of science and that 
whatever that other stuff is. So you do work virtual with people. Yes. And why don't we talk about that SIP, because that is fascinating to me, that it's science, it's intuition, it's trust. So you're building a trusting relationship with your dog, and then it seems to me you're training each other. Do I have that right? Um, yeah, really. Um, if I'm truthful, my dogs have trained me to do a lot of things. So. <laughs> <laughs> They're very good at that. They're very effective. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my dogs uses her potty bell. You know, I have a bell right. that she rings to let me know she wants to go out, but she uh -huh. has also learned to use it to ring for room service when she <laughs> wants to be <laughs> <hungry>. so. <laughs> but, um, yeah, with it, the SIT program is really about communicating, and first of all, we start off learning to speak dog. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I go into dog body language and how they use it to communicate with each other and to communicate with us. Mm -hmm. uh, and because it's more than just a wagging tail, you know, and mm -hmm. I tend to think about obedience training and so on, which mm -hmm. I don't say obedience, you know, I say compliance. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say commands, I say cues, you know, mm -hmm. because it's all about the language um, and our mindset. But, um, you know, it, if we can learn to listen to dogs, dogs want to be heard. And that's mm -hmm. part of the animal communication, but it's also part of the training. It's, it's a two-way conversation. It's a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And if we're really listening to what they're saying, then, then we can open up the relationship. We can have a more trusting um, and understanding relationship. Interesting. So when, when I've worked with you, so we went through the, the SIT, the, the sort of intro, I guess, SIT program mm -hmm. together, um, it's almost as if you're saying, and I have other other um, animal communicator friends who say this, but animals need meaning and purpose in their life. They're, they have, they Very want much. to be involved with us in some way. Can you expand on that? Um, yeah, I mean, they have as much to teach us as we have to teach them. Um, I always say when, when I teach, I learn. Right. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's um, I, I do, in my book, I talk about how they mirror us and how they can present metaphors for us. Um, and and I, can, I can talk about that. Yeah, give, give us an example. Um, give me an example of. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I, I uh, had been out walking with my dogs, uh, Penny and the Jet. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I came home and uh, came home, I was taking Penny's harness off mm -hmm. and I looked up to notice Jet standing in the kitchen doorway and he was just frozen there. Mm -hmm. And I knew he wanted to do what he always does when we come home from a walk, which is to go in and get a drink of water. Mm -hmm. But he was just standing there, frozen. And I looked up to see that he was standing on his own leash. So he believed that he couldn't move forward. He was, he was just standing there. And uh, I thought about that and I thought, first I thought, oh, you silly boy. And then <laughs> I went, you know what? I was just out, when I was out on the walk, I was pondering a decision. Um, it, it was about my business and I was pondering uh, about doing this new thing with my business. And uh, I, I realized, I, I said, you know what? I'm doing the same thing. I'm standing on my own leash <laughs> and my leash would be fear. I was really kind of afraid. And I thought, you know, here I am standing on my own leash, which is fear. Mm -hmm. And I can't walk through that doorway to get what I want. So, so he taught me something that day. <laughs> right, and so there's, and not that he intentionally thought that, 
but that there was a, like if we pay attention, right? Exactly. That they, they are mirroring, they are yeah. telling us and teaching us things in the moment. That's, that's really fascinating. You've got some other examples like that in the, in the book. Um, one of the things that, that really um, spoke to me though was that they're, they're really trying. So that's like a, almost like an accidental metaphor, but they really are trying to relate to us. Yes. And communicate with us. And all we think about is first, um, and you know, I'm, I've got a puppy, so I understand this, right? Don't bite my ankles, and oh, your tail is wagging, so it's okay. And and we're very <laughs> limited, right? Um, and and then I, let, before we do that, let's talk about how it's changed, right? How what you do is different, and and why it's effective. No choke chain. We have cues at the trust part of sit with our dogs. Mm-hmm. Well, we're first of all communicating and and letting them know that they're being heard and that's not necessarily like my sit program i'm not teaching people to be animal communicators Mm -hmm. although we we all are Mm -hmm. we just we just need to realize that Um, but opening up and and just hearing them listening to them and not coming from a place of do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. I think like with children, you wouldn't, you wouldn't say, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. You need to communicate and say, here's what you do, here's what we want you to do. Here is something to do yeah. that's appropriate. <laughs> you wanna yeah. channel, channel that energy differently. Um, and I have seen with clients and with their dogs, I have seen the dogs uh, almost go, oh, they get me. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been trying to say. <laughs> oh, that's great. Because we've moved from the notion of I got to be the alpha, right? Which is a completely false, I mean, that's not even what wolves do, right? Okay. To right. this. Um, this dog has something to offer. We're partnership, and I have a working breed, and they were then bred not to be told what to do, but to think, exactly. right? Mm-hmm. Um, how does that breed element sort of come in, in into into that? Like I've got a working breed dog. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, that you understand that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, sometimes I work with people who are, you know, it's like. Can you teach my beagle not to sniff so much when we're out on the walk? <laughs> like, well, no, but here we can help you to to communicate better. You know, right. uh, we can get you engaged more, and and that's the whole thing is engaging and and that mindset. Mm-hmm. You know, you talk about alpha and. Um, being in charge and I I always say that you know living with a dog is like parenting it's like you know the, I, I often say uh, you know we ask you know would we treat our children that way mm-hmm. you know um, and uh, uh, and sometimes it just people just need to hear that um, mm. is that, oh, really, you know, some of my favorite uh, clients are, uh, well, parents of young children or elementary school teachers and therapists. <laughs> because, oh, wow, they, yeah. Um, it. But it's just like, oh, I never thought about applying that to my dog. So. That's, that's fascinating. Um, so let's do a little bit of advice, okay? Because I think I shared this with you. Um, I have a puppy, she's a great dog. She's truly a great dog. She's, um, and to give people a notion if you don't know what a Newfoundland is, I have a five month old puppy who's 57 pounds. So my five month old puppy is most people's definition of a good sized dog. And we're a little over halfway to where we're gonna go in size, right? Um, And she's an ankle biter, just me. 
she doesn't necessarily, she does, if there's other people around in the house, she might, you know, she likes feet. And I'll be getting dressed, I'll be doing something, if, if I, and she's biting my ankles. And this, this morning, it's the second time I've done this, I've taken apple bitter spray and sprayed my feet, my ankles, and my shoes to get her to stop biting me. And there's clearly a message here because she, she does it continually. And I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to lose my temper. But I, I, and so how would you work with me on this? <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I hear you on that one. Uh, those, uh, she probably still has some of her puppy teeth. No, we have full, a yes. full adult mouth. <laughs> okay, good, because oh, those puppy teeth are- They're like needles. Are, They're like, yeah. like, oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. And that's because when they're small, they are, their jaws are not very strong, so that's why their teeth are so sharp. Oh. But um, the first thing I would recommend, uh, well, there's, there's no, really no problem with spraying yourself with apple bitter, um, <laughs> but it could eventually, you know, it's a management tool, but we also right. want to put in some training. Um, and it could get inconvenient and expensive, so. <laughs> <laughs> and silly, I wonder also what I smell like when I walk. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not what my favorite perfume. <laughs> <laughs> exactly one of the things I was going to recommend that okay. you do. Okay. Um, so we can, we can yelp and we can redirect with something that's appropriate on okay. the toy. Um, you can also do that where it's, and I suggest that people when they're playing with their puppies maybe set themselves up where you're in a room that's, you have a baby date and it's like, ah, oh, you just bit me and so, oops, I'm going to go away. So then the puppy is learning, well, that's exactly the opposite of what I want. Okay. Oh, I just lost you. Pat, can you hear me? I just lost you. Can you check? Okay. okay. Oh, there you are. You're back. You're good. Good. Yeah. Who I did not touch anything. <laughs> You know what? I'm just computers are just being very weird oh, right now. Yeah. I'm just surrendering to it. Or whatever. Yeah, mine was challenging me this morning, and I was like, "No, not today, please." <laughs> so I want to not play. I want to somehow right. communicate to her in a in an appropriate way to stop yeah. this. I'm clearly yeah. failing at this because we do this every single day. Um, mm -hmm. One of my friends said, "I think she came. She like came to you as your dog." to make you more playful, which would be great, except that this isn't making me more playful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and you said, you know, I don't wanna lose my temper, and, and obviously that's not gonna, gonna be helpful. So, um, 
Another thing I suggest you do is teach an incompatible behavior. So when you're when you're playing with her and she starts to mouth you, right. um, I would ask her for a sit instead. And also, okay. as part of this mindful training, part of what I do in sit is to ask people to visualize what they want their dog to do because. Um, that way we're projecting an image to our dog of what we want them to do. If you are going, oh, don't bite me, don't bite me, we, we really cannot teach dogs what not to do. We can only teach them what to do. Okay. Uh, so I would visualize having her do a sit, mm -hmm. asking her for that sit, rewarding her, for that sit with um, either a treat mm -hmm. or um, a favorite chew toy um, and your attention as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if she's sitting and then pretty soon she learns that, you know, sitting is magical. Um, I call it the magic butt syndrome. They're like, <laughs> if I put my butt on the floor, really good things right. happen. Yeah. So I would give that a try. Okay. <laughs> I'm also trying to teach her inside voice. Um, or, or, you know, say please, inside voice. And so what I'm working on that, because what will happen is she barks at me, and probably lots of the listeners have this experience too. And if you've just tuned in, I am talking to Pat Blocker. Um, Pat, repeat how, she's an amazing trainer, animal, animal communicator. Um, Pat, repeat how people find you. Where's your website? What, what's your book? How do they get in touch with you? And you work with people virtually. So anybody can work with you. So give us yeah. all that information again. Yeah. My website is www.peacefulpaws.net. Uh, you can find both of my books. My first book is Taking the Lead Without Jerking the Leash. My second book is Letting in the Dog, Opening Hearts and Minds to a Deeper Understanding. Those can both be found at your favorite bookseller. Um, well, not both of them, um, letting in the dog. Um, both of them can be found on uh, Amazon as well. Uh, and I did read that one and found it very useful and very helpful. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> so, um, get my mind back to where I was. So, a lot of our sort of natural reaction, which is that, I've got to be alpha, you know, the old way of teaching, right? I've got to be alpha, I've got to be in control, I've got to get them to behave. None of that is actually, I mean, it can be, I mean, on some level it was effective, but it isn't effective in building a, a partnership, a relationship with the dog, right? right? And so I, I have had people when I'm walking my dog tell me, go get a, uh, go get a choke chain, don't, you got to be the alpha. People will just stop me randomly and tell me to do that. I'm like, yeah, I got a new fee. She's just going to be insulted if I do that. <laughs> so, um, so where I started to go down was barking when she's barking. And if I yell, I suddenly realize we're barking at each other. Yeah. We're just barking at each other, right? So what, what do you have for people who are trying to deal with a dog? I get some breeds bark a lot. And if you get a breed that barks, they're going to. But when they're sort of sassing, because that's what she does, she sasses me. What, mm -hmm. what should I do there? Well, dogs bark for different reasons. We have different solutions for those different reasons. In your case, um, it sounds like she's barking at you for attention. Mm -hmm. And there again, we, and, and she could easily train you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, and and you're right. If you if you say no, quiet, you know, then yeah, it's just sort of like you're barking back at her. Right. And even if you are reprimanding her or saying no, don't bark, she's still getting what she wants mm -hmm. because she's getting your attention, even though it's negative attention that's still to her that's better than no attention at all so when it's when it's barking for attention we really need to ignore it 
we need to teach her like with with the mouthing mm -hmm. is that you know this behavior actually gets me the opposite of what I want right. uh, now as I said I have three German Shepherds German Shepherds um, do their jobs and they alert the world to the fact that uh, yeah. There's a sleeper cell of terrorists in the alley, you know? <laughs> so, or a squirrel. <laughs> yeah, right. yes. so, um, so for for that, I have taught them to be quiet on cue. Um, so that's a you know different reason that they're barking. Uh, but in your situation, yeah, we want her to learn that you know what that's not cutting it. That's not getting me what I want. Right. You, I mean, I think that one of the things people have to understand is that they're all cute when they're little, but they <laughs> all do, they, but they're, they're breed specific, right? Yeah. If you get, and they're great dogs, I'm not putting a dog down, but if you get, for example, a Great Pyrenees, that's a guardian animal. It will, like, yeah. like a shepherd, it will guard your backyard and bark at anything that moves, a leaf, a right. twig, your neighbor, or any, anything, mm -hmm. right? If you get a terrier, Best of luck, right? They were, right? And the smarter the dog, the more you have to have a partnership as opposed to exactly. a trainer, right? Because they, I have a working breed. She knows to, she has to think for herself, mm -hmm. which she's clearly mm -hmm. doing, right? So do you help people when they're looking for a puppy by chance? Like that sure. would be a good fit, yeah. that wouldn't be a good fit? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, definitely uh, we could do a consultation and, and uh, we could just sort of figure out, yeah, what's going to be the best for you? Um, you know, where, oh, you live in an apartment, um, then maybe a border collie might not be a great fit for you. <laughs> right. um, let's maybe look at a greyhound, you know? Um, <laughs> you like to walk a lot, you like to hike, what breed like, would you yeah, like? Yeah, what is your lifestyle and what... Right. Uh, and also, how much time do you have to commit to training and, and right. uh, you know, just being with your dog? Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just fascinating to me that we adore them, we love them, and yet sometimes we're, we're so silly, right, about <laughs> the dog that we get. It's like, this is not a good dog for your, for your lifestyle, yeah. right? <laughs> and, I, and I have to say that I just happen to love huge breeds, and every... Time I'm out with a full-grown new, a, a woman will come up to me and go, "What is it about us women that love huge dogs?" And I, you have German Shepherds, so you're sort of in that world, right? <laughs> I don't know what that is. I know, but you know, talking about a dog that fits into your lifestyle, every year, I feel like, you know, and. I'm, I'm not going to reveal my age, but I, you know, you think when you get a puppy, this is at least 10 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, every, every year, I think I'm one year closer to a little sweater dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. And I'm like, yeah. Uh, and, and then I do think sometimes the dog shows up. I, I oh, will, right. Totally. And have you had yeah. that experience? Like, I guess you, this is what I needed because this dog showed up. Yeah, with every dog I've ever had, mm -hmm. they were sent to me mm -hmm. uh, for a reason. In, in my book, I have uh, a little uh, story about each one of my dogs and how they came to me. So which, I believe that they find me. <laughs> which is really back to that notion that they come with a purpose. Yes. Right? They come with They're a purpose, and, and this is the dog we, we need. We need to yes. have. Yes. So we're coming to the, the end of our time together, and I want to sort of circle back. What, what do you really want people to know about this, this work that you do? And again, we'll end with how you, they get in touch with you, but what do you really want them to know about why they, why they would choose to work with you? And again, it's virtual, so they can be anywhere on the planet. Right. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. the, and and that's awesome uh, that I get to work with anybody. I'm not limited to a service area. Um, really, what I'd like to, people to know that that it's real. The animal communication is real. Mm -hmm. The training is based in science. The communication is based from the heart. Mm -hmm. um, 
And combining the two really helps to build trust and understanding. And I think that's the under, underpinning of any really solid relationship. Um, and, and I feel, feel to know that dogs give us so much mm -hmm. and that we can give them so much more just by taking the time to understand them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I mean, the whole thing about letting in the dog is letting them into our hearts uh, as they have already let us into theirs. And, and to just open that door with understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can leave that door open with uh, mindfulness and compassion as our doorstop. <laughs> so in some ways, dogs are teaching us how to have great relationships with, with other people even, right? Exactly, and with ourselves. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. this has been great, so let's do this one more time. You got a book that I loved, Letting in the Dog. It's on Amazon. Your program is SITT, SIT. If they Google SIT, will they find you? Um, uh, I, yeah. I, okay, so they should, I, they can doubtful, do a search. I don't know. They can yeah. do a search for Pat Walker. They can yes. go to Peaceful Amazon. Pause. Okay, yeah. Peaceful Paws. They can go to Amazon and find right. Letting in the Dog. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, and your website. Your website's Peaceful Paws, right? Right. Yes, peacefulpaws.net. Okay. Um, and also there they can they can find the 90-minute one-on-one webinar with me, um, like you and I did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also I have a, a SIT membership page where oh. uh, with a membership, then they have access to the pre-recorded SIT webinar. And, uh, and then also lots of other um, information about training and dog behavior. Awesome, awesome. So again, if you're listening, I, I did the SIT training with, with Pat. I have taken, you can tell she's given me great advice for my puppy. Um, I've learned so much from you. You know, when we go for a walk and she freezes, I'm like, well, she's freezing because she's thinking and she's getting information in and I should just, hang out and look at the world while she's doing the same thing and then we move on um so i've already learned so much from you so if you listen well you are listening you're you're listening to the dr lisa show on kuhs denver the stream and you have an animal um let's specific let's do specifically dogs here but really i think if you even have a question about relating to an animal at all reach out and contact pat pat thank you so much for being on the show I'm sure we'll be back in touch. I'll, I'll, we'll update you on the ankle biting and see how that yes, works. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank uh, you so much for having me. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, everyone out there, as I am trying to close out Facebook, Zoom, how interesting. There we go. All right. Thank you for being with me. I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Pat. Uh, interesting work, really effective work, I have to tell you. And definitely somebody who has tried to train dogs in the, um, in the old alpha way. And if you have a smart dog, they just get kind of insulted. You can train them, but they're always they're just gonna be a little pissy with you. They might sass. So, encourage you to reach out. We're going to take a little bit of a shift. You are still listening to the Dr. Lisa Show here on KUHS Denver, the stream. The Facebook site is live and it is open. And I would love to have you connect with me if possible. And just, just go to the Dr. Lisa Show on Facebook and you can chat with me. This is gonna be the new format from now on. I have some amazing guests coming on, just incredible. But they'll each be on for the first half hour. And then it's going to be us chatting. So I'm hoping that this is like the first time to maybe start encouraging you to do that. And I don't have the phone line set up, I'm sorry. But the Facebook site is open. I'd like you to sort of one-on-one -on -one with me. 
And the topic for the rest of the year is going to be about life on beliefs. So let me talk about what that is and why I'm embracing that. Um, I, and you can probably tell, right? If I wrote a book about being a leadership using sort of Johnny Depp and Jimmy Buffett as my leadership models, that I've always been a little on the outside of the circle, or maybe just at the edge. In this book, I actually talk about, and you can also get this on Amazon, by the way, uh, wrote it with my writing partner, Dr. Cindy Miles. I talk about, sometimes it's hard to shift the armada, the big group of shift, of, um, of, of battle ships from the center. But boy, from the edges, you can do amazing things. And that's where I've lived my life, is at the edges, purposefully. I have learned that I often am uh, uncomfortable if I'm in the center and I feel like I can't get out. But leadership for me is maybe showing people they can cross a bridge and that it's safe and then letting them cross it. Maybe sort of encouraging people to step forward and take the lead as opposed to being the one, you know, in front or in the middle. And that's just that part of me. I have been, one of my coping mechanisms that I've had my entire life is running away. And I have to say that it was 12 degrees on the way to the radio station and still spinning snow here in Colorado. And while I love this state, I'm like, how do I get out of this place? And that, like, in, in many times in my life, I just buy airplane tickets and get to a warm beach. And I can tell that that is, <laughs> that maybe I should be doing more of that in the cold weather. That is one of my techniques, is just to go. Life on the leaves, being able to recognize who you are. You know, when I think about it, I've had people say to me, so life on the loose is like, you know, selling everything you own, right? And being a gypsy and not having any responsibility. Well, have you ever, like, just imagine yourself, if you could, with a gypsy cart, big draft horse and a cart. That horse needs to be taken care of. You don't get through life without the taking care of the shoes and the teeth and making sure that their diet is right and that they're not pulling too much and you gotta take care of the horse. Oh, and the cart. Make sure the wheels don't fall off. And you still need clothing and you still need food and you have to take care of those things. So life on the loose is not life without responsibility. It's life with choice about what I, what I listen to in terms of the guidance, in terms of the, the rules about how life works and what I choose. Again, it doesn't mean I ignore red lights or stop signs. It does mean that I feel responsible for being a good part of a community and how I can help. So let me give you an example. I am one of those people and you know what, if you are one of these people, just give me a thumbs up, okay, in the Facebook site. Every time I take some personality test, and trust me, as an academic, every retreat somebody was giving you, an Enneagram, a Colors, a Myers-Briggs, a Strengths, a blah, 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 every single time, I ended up at the edges of the group, every single time. And, and would have somebody then talk to me about coming in closer to the middle, like working on that other part of me. And does that sound like you? Just give me a thumbs up in the Facebook site. Often when, now I've, I've got books, right? I've got a leadership book and then I've got this sort of uh, vampire, spiritual, healing, dark, women, whatever book, right? <laughs> a, little, a little esoteric, mysterious. And people tell me how to market it. Go and be the popular kid on Facebook, be the popular kid on um, Instagram, everywhere else. And none of that resonates with me. I was so far from the popular table in school, I couldn't even, I couldn't even see the people sitting there. I don't want to play that game. That's not how my life has worked. And yet I've had an amazing life. I've had a great career. 
I have academic credentials. I've done what I wanted to do. And noticed when I had to play the game to get it to work and acknowledge it was a game. And when I could push the edges. So here's the person who was an academic dean at a very straight laced institution who had blue and purple streaks in her hair. Yeah, they're in there. You might not be able to see them. If you're on the radio, you can't. But if you're watching on Facebook, I'm not sure you can see them, but they're there. I have learned that kids can always see them. Teenagers can always see them. Life on the loose is embracing that part of yourself. Yes, I'm a good citizen. I donate blood. I believe in, in taking care of other people. I believe in, in lots of things like that, in donating to charities. I also, though, believe that I need to awaken that inner sleeper inside of me and show up as I truly am in the world. And sometimes that means I don't fit in certain situations, and I acknowledge that. Sometimes people aren't going to get who I am, and I acknowledge that. And I can joyfully say, that's okay. That's okay. I still can be who I am. You know, one of my friends said to me that I, I traded a lot to have an academic career. And my joke is, I put my soul out on long-term lease. But I'm proud of what I did. I was still doing it on the loose. I was doing it my way. And I was doing it for a specific purpose that I was very committed to. And when I reached that purpose and reached that goal, I put turquoise streaks in my hair. And that should have been the clue, the turquoise streaks, that I was done and I was moving on. And where has that taken me? Wow. I'll tell you what I've wanted to do my whole life. I have wanted to be a motivational speaker and an author. Done. That's what I've wanted to be. And here, um, thankfully, KUHS Denver, the stream is a great station. They've given me that platform and that voice to hopefully motivate you and, and inspire you and make you understand that, you, that life is a paradox and you can do both. You can have a career or a job and a family. You can do the things you want to do there and still do them in your unique way. And I'm an author. I've published my books. Oh, and you so should buy them. You so should read them. They're amazing, especially the most recent one. You know, I'll, I'll give you some examples. I grew up in an era where my grandmother said to me that um, one day I was talking about never cutting my hair. And my grandmother said, well, there'll be a day when you'll have to. And I said, why? And she said, well, because there is an age at which it's inappropriate for a woman to have long hair. And um, I laughed, and I said, how, how can that be? You know, at this point in my, in my childhood, Catherine Hepburn was older and had long hair. And I'm like, she hasn't cut her hair. And I said, when she cuts her hair, I'll know how old a woman should be. And, and Catherine Hepburn died with long hair. And I am way, way past the age where my grandmother would have found this appropriate. When I got married and didn't change my name, my grandmother said to me, well, it, you have to. It's the law. I'm like, it's not the law, actually. You don't have to. And I was in the middle of a PhD, and changing my name would have been academically a nightmare because I already had published articles. And, and I sort of never recovered from that. That was my life on the loose. We're told things that we have to be a certain person. And we have to, honestly, we came here to listen to our soul's craving. Believe it or not, you are not your political party. And I'm not going down the political rabbit hole here, but I want you to know that sometimes we say things because of what we were taught and what we heard. Cut your hair, dress more appropriately, I worked in a, in a man's industry as a geologist in an oil world, and I refused to dress like a guy, and I had long hair. Didn't work out well, as I'm sure you can guess. It did not work out well. Proud of the degree. Proud that I went down that avenue. Oh yeah, also proud that I sued them on sexual harassment and discrimination. And uh, yeah, created some changes in the wake of that. That was me living authentically. That's life on the loose. Let me add something. 
we're going to talk about this. We have lots of time. We're going to talk about this all year with different people. And Pat is living that way, right? She went from the skeptic to this animal communicator, understanding that relationships, relationships are what rule the world and that, that relationships aren't based on ordering each other around, demanding obedience. And as a double Aquarius, I can tell you, demanding obedience from me will always backfire. And so no wonder I got a puppy like that. No wonder. Life on the loose is listening to that inner voice and knowing that the paradox exists. I can do the things I need to do in the world, have a good job, and I can do those things. I, and, and at the same time, do it the way that works for me. But I have to accept the consequences. Those, per, those uh, turquoise streaks in my hair and that leading in a way that was pushing for innovation as opposed to recapitulating tradition, that, that, <laughs> that took me down the exit ramp of my last career. I accept those consequences. I was ready for those consequences. I'm not angry about those consequences. That's life on the loose. Not blaming, living and accepting, living and knowing. Okay, people, this has got to get some of you stirred up. It's got to get some of you interested. I realize this is the first real conversation about it. But from this time on, for every time I'm on, I want chatter from you. I want you talking to me in the Facebook page. I'm going to want you texting me in the studio. If you're one of my clients, you know my private line, you can text me there. I want to hear how you're doing that and how that's opening up your shell how that is opening up the dynamic creative force within you, and that force longs to be expressed. I have to tell you that. You know, Joseph Campbell talked about uh, following your bliss, and one of the things he said that really moved me was that we're not looking to understand life. We don't want to find the meaning of life. We want to have a meaningful, passionate, rich experience of life. And that doesn't mean every moment is joyful. It means we're engaged with it. Yeah, there's laughter, yeah, there's joy, but you know, life comes with heartache. It comes with that. When we try to avoid that at all cost, we just build strong walls around ourselves and we block ourselves off from the reality of living. There's a Buddhist notion of joyfully um, participating in the sorrows of the world being aware that this is life and I am so happy to be alive. Yeah, I've almost died a few times and yeah, I've had heartbreak and I have to tell you I'm so glad to be here and especially with you. So listen, we're at like at the end here and, and the, I'll be back in two weeks with Life on the Loose, another amazing guest. Um, Oh my God, I got so many people coming on. It's absolutely incredible. Um, and a really diverse group of women who've done incredible things and have lived life on the loose in their own way. And I think some of it's going to surprise you. Meanwhile, what I want you to do, I want to leave you with this thought. There are so many ways to live your life. What I want you to do is notice that there's a spark of life within you, a flame, and let that flame burn. Let it burn bright. Let that help you stay well, stay curious, stay inspired, and stay living life on the loose. See you in two weeks. Have a great, have a great inspired time.